Hey everyone, welcome back to the Globetrotters podcast where we highlight the travel stories of everyday people in the hopes that we may inspire others to look beyond their borders, literally and figuratively. I'm your co-host, Jonathan Otero. And I'm Maximil Gonzalez. And Max, today's a special day because we're going to start off a little bit different than normal. The Globetrotters podcast just celebrated their one year anniversary on the 26th of July. Whoop, whoop. And <laughs> and because of that reason, we decided to give out a few gift cards to our listeners who answered our travel trivia questions. Well, really, your travel trivia questions. That's right. Uh, this gift card giveaway is sponsored by Car Depot, where you save money on everyday purchases with discounted gift cards. You can go to cardepot.com to start saving on your next gift card today. And because of them, we will be gifting two gift cards, $100 gift card and a $50 gift card to either REI or Airbnb winner gets to choose um, i know most of you can't wait to know if it'll be you i know i can't so max do us the honor of announcing the winner yeah our first winner of the 50 dollars gift card goes to mia from san diego and ucla track and field her instagram handle is at mia serve big congrats mia stoke for you and the winner of the whopping 100 dollars gift card we have shay a berry a writer and author with the instagram nice. handle at shay.australia Congratulations to you both. We're super stoked for you. Thank you so much for being Globetrot Pod listeners and participating in our travel trivia. Please reach out to us so we can award you your prize as soon as possible. Wow. Is, is her last name really Australia or is that just on the handle? I, I believe her last name's Australia. She doesn't live in Australia, but... <laughs> Could have fooled me. Congrats to both me and Shay for being supporters of the show. To those that didn't win, keep tuning in. Try out your luck with our next tra uh, trivia quiz, and you might be the next winner. So now that the suspense is over, let's get back to the show. Yeah, if you missed our last episode, we had another edition of the Layover series, where instead of interviewing guests, we keep it really casual while bringing you the trending travel topics of the week, some lesser known destinations, hopefully to inspire your next adventure, yep. and some tourist traps. But today, Max, we're here with Sarah Croft, a young Canadian physiotherapist and traveler who spent seven weeks solo traveling around Europe. You always hear travelers having the endless debate about the pros and cons of booking with a travel company, but today we're going to have the luxury of hearing both sides of that argument from Sarah and us. She spent a total of four weeks on the tour group and roughly two weeks on her own in between these two travel tours. Overall, Sarah visited more than 12 cities and eight countries in this time span. Sarah, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> so just to get uh, this kick started, how did this trip come about? And why did you decide to go on a tour group opposed to traveling independently? Uh, so uh, my plan was always after I finished my undergraduate degree between doing my undergrad and my master's, I wanted to do some traveling and I had planned on going with a friend from undergrad and we had planned out a trip roughly together. Like we kind of wanted to fly by the seat of our pants a little bit, but we knew like what countries we wanted to hit. So we booked our flights to Paris. And then a couple weeks before, I think it was maybe three or four weeks before, like I had already quit my job. So it was going to be seven weeks total. And she backed out. So wait, uh, wait, you quit your job to go on this trip? I did. Yes. I, I worked at a bar and I had been there for a long time and I had a right. feeling they'd take me back, but I did quit just because I knew I wouldn't be there for seven weeks. So, And what was the reason that your friend decided not to go on this trip? Truthfully, I don't really know. She still went to Paris. Her grandmother lives in Paris. So she still went to Paris. We didn't even see each other. We both went and just... Yeah, I went my separate way. She went her separate way. So I don't even know why she ended up canceling, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> and you went with a tour group called Contiki Travel. Is that right? So I I ended so I went to my flight was originally booked to Paris, but it was booked for uh five days before the Contiki tour. So I decided to do Contiki tours. Actually, my my dad convinced me because he was very afraid of me going alone at 23. So I was like, okay, fine. Like I'll do a couple tour groups, but then I'm going to do part of it on my own too. 
and Kintiki was actually my friend had uh, had used it before. And so she suggested it. And she's told me like the advantage of it was that it was going to be people around my age, like people under 35. So it's usually just like people looking to travel and have fun. Mm -hmm. So aside from like kind of being around the same, you know, the same people with the same kind of objectives, uh, was like safety and security a big part of it for you? Like, I know your dad probably was pushing towards it to make sure you were, you know, constantly looked after and made sure nothing too crazy happened. So were there any other like major selling points of why you went with Kentucky? That tour group in particular, not really. It was really the only one that I had heard of. There was another one that I had heard of, but I knew it was for like older people like older couples and stuff. So it was really only those two that I knew of. But uh, after looking at the Kentucky tours, they were pretty affordable. So that was another reason why I was like, oh, okay, like that's kind of what I had budgeted for those couple of weeks anyways. So <laughs> that works out well. Yeah, and less work on your end too. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And before we start talking about, you know, some of these aspects of your travel, um, I'm sure the question that everyone's wondering is what cities and countries did you actually go to? And can you talk about the structure of the seven weeks, like where you went with the first tour group and on your own? Yeah, so started in Paris and I stayed there for close to a week. Maybe, I think it was five days. And the first tour group that was two weeks started in London. So I just took the train to London. And from there, it went to just Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And then it went to Germany and Austria. And then we went to Italy Switzerland, then back to Paris for that one. And then I had met a few people on the tour and they were sticking around for a little while. And I had some time between then and my next tour group. So I was like, okay, is anyone like, what's everyone doing? And some people were hanging around Paris for a little while and going to see Versailles. So I did that with them. And then uh, I went to Spain, where my next tour group was starting, I hung around Madrid uh, and went to Barcelona, and then came back to Madrid for the next tour group. And it was all in Spain. The whole tour was in Spain. And I take it that you wanted Paris to be your starting point, because originally, like you said, your friend had family there. So were you going to be able to stay with some of their relatives while you were there? Yeah, that was the original plan um, was to stay for a few days in Paris with her family and then just go from there. And so how did that change your plans once you got there without her? Well, I, I just stayed in hostels. Uh, well, particularly I just stayed in one hostel because I was there for a week. So I just yeah. booked it for the week and then just toured around Paris a little bit by myself. And people I met uh, in the hostel kind of did what they wanted to do, too. Max, you're a fan of hostels, right? I, I was actually about to ask, like, are you are you a big hostel goer? Like, I feel like me and my partner always get into like little not arguments, but she'll be like, oh, let's do a hotel. And I'm like, we should see if there's a hostel instead. We do that. You know, like, uh, are you a big dorm person? How do you go about traveling normally? So I don't mind hostels, honestly. Like, I, I think they're pretty great for meeting people. Like, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I honestly I had a ton of fun. Like, uh, I think, I don't know if John, we stayed in the same hostel. I we did in Madrid. Did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's a, it's a great way of meeting people. So I like them, but I like my creature comforts too. So if I'm in a hostel of like, you're in a room with 10 other people, I like to a couple days later, stay somewhere that's a little smaller where I can have like kind of my own shower, maybe just shared between like two other people or something, yeah. but yeah. a little recharge. Yeah. 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 Well, I was going to kind of backtrack a little bit because I kind of want to cover all the basics first. I obviously love hearing about people's backpacking stories, their pathways, kind of how they go about it, what their motives are. But I wanted to go back to like, you know, Kentucky as a brand. Like, do you remember the name of the other place you were considering or the other tour company you were considering? Is there a reason why you chose Kentucky over like Intrepid Travels or True Travels? Were there any like major selling points there aside from the ones that we talked or, about earlier? Or Infinity like, right? Travels. <laughs> leave mine out of this <laughs> <laughs> honestly I hadn't heard so the only one that 
the only other one that I had heard of was for older. I think it may have even had an age limit. Like mm-hmm. Kentucky had the age limit of like 35 and under. Mm-hmm. And the other one had an age limit of, I think it was like 60 and up. So I didn't even qualify for that one, <laughs> nor did I want to go on that one. Uh, but yeah, at the time I was a pretty novice travel. Like I had traveled to Europe before that. Um, but it was with my soccer team. I played soccer over there. Um, and yeah, so I hadn't, I hadn't really been exposed to tour groups at all. So when my girlfriend said, why don't you try Kentucky? I didn't even, I didn't even think to look at other tour groups, to be honest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough answer. Uh, were there any, like outside of just traveling alone, were there any like fears that you had about hostels? Cause I know for me specifically, like when I was looking into them, the two categories that I would look at was cleanliness and security i just you know as long as they have a locker that i can kind of lock my stuff in and that it's relatively clean those were my first two uh like categories that i would check off the list what about for you yeah that was same same as me i always made sure that there was a locker that i could lock up my stuff and then i i always looked for like proximity to like the center of the city especially having not traveled by myself ever before I didn't want to get stuck far outside of a city and not really know my way into it and like and not knowing how the like train systems or subway whatever it was uh in the country how it worked so I just kind of made sure that my hostels were pretty close and yeah I looked up reviews for cleanliness and I did kind of some of them I I made sure were girl only dorms Um, Like, not that, not that I really cared to stay with a guy, but I just thought that, you know, it might be a little bit safer. For instance, the one that we stayed at, John, wasn't, wasn't just like girls dorms. And I had a room one night because I was there, I was in that hostel for probably like five days. And there was like a 60 something year old man in my room. And he was always wasted and he had bottles of tequila <laughs> everywhere and i was I like love this guy ah this is kind of weird like <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. you, talk, you know you get the, to the start of your tour from paris to london i have to ask did you fly or did you take the um eurostar the yeah thank you i i took the eurostar yeah nice. okay yeah, that's that's it. For anyone listening, do that. I did the opposite and I took a plane. It's it's way more. It's it's just a hassle to do the same trip. And frankly, it takes a little bit longer on a plane, you know, with all the boarding process and your luggage. But uh, talk to us about the first few days when you got there with your group. There obviously have to be people that stood out. Yeah, yeah, lots of, well, Kentucky is an Australian tour group. So there were quite a few Australians on the tour. I met a girl from California and we really hit it off and we were roommates. And yeah, it, they started the tour. They did it well. Like they started it with a booze cruise in Amsterdam. So everyone kind of got to know each other that way from like the first night you're having drinks together and you get to know each other pretty pretty quick when you go to a live sex show. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's how it started. This, the first was, night was the live sex show. <laughs> no, this is part of this is on the agenda. So when your dad's like helping you book the continuous tour, it's just like enjoy the sex show, sweetheart. Day well, but at least it's after the booze yeah. cruise, though. So. You know, it, it is a good strategy on their end. You know, anyone shy, it's kind of let's get rid of that shyness on night one. But. No, no. Um, yeah, exactly. So yeah, we, uh, nobody was shy after that. And some people ended up going up on stage and like, yeah, we got to know each other pretty quickly in that first night. <laughs> and then like, even after the live sex show, we all like went to bars together and stuff after. And from there, like who stood out? Probably the Australians for sure. There was one other Canadian that I got along with that I ended up traveling around with a little bit afterwards. John, you might remember Tyler, who I was with. And then uh, there was another Canadian from Quebec. And she she hung around for a little bit after the tour too. So I got to know her fairly well. But I'd say like, I still I still talk to the girl that I roomated or was roommates with uh, the girl from California. She's now in New York. So yeah. Oh, so maybe this wasn't even a question that I had written down or thought of, but 
they partner you up with someone throughout the tour, throughout the tour group. Yeah, they they just I don't I kind of think they must somehow I don't know how they pick. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. they do match make a little bit because they don't tell you until like you don't know your roommate until partway in. Like, I think they kind of get to know you a little bit first. And my second tour group, I was partnered with a girl who lives like 45 minutes away from me. So that was handy because we got together after we got home from Europe and we got along really well too. So yeah, they, I think they do kind of figure out your personality first and then match you up. That, that can go, that can go either way though. That, that sounds pretty like a, a dangerous line to kind of tread. I'm assuming, or maybe there were people on your tour group that weren't too keen on their, you know, travel partner. Did did that happen at all? Uh, You know what? I don't, think that really happened the one there was one night in Ibiza where two roommates went for the same guy on the tour (laughs) and it got a little messy there but that was like halfway through the tour group but yeah no I think for the most part everyone seemed to get along sounds like a good tour I wish they all would go that way (laughs) <laughs> yes yeah, so max is actually a, a tour guide which is why we're having this conversation with him here because he he can tell us a bunch of stories that have been kind of kind of gnarly to be quite frank but i've, I've had a few yeah so but there's been the ones that are great where literally everyone gets along and i remember a couple of them it's like the last day and you're just sitting and you're like there hasn't been any drama like no one no one's complained about anything like that. And you just kind of like count down the time. Like you're like, okay, like tour's over. Everything's good. Cool. Great. Yeah. Yeah. How did this go so well? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. what, one of the things that I guess people are hesitant to like book with tour groups is because of the schedule. I mean, it's, they pretty much map out the entire day, if not the entire the 14 days that you're with them. Can you take us through a typical day of what that consisted of, what time you're going to sleep and how much freedom you have in between, you know, these activities? That's where I would say that's where there's a pretty big downside is you don't have a lot of freedom. Um, It is very scheduled almost down to the minute. And, and like you're on long bus rides some of the time because you're going between countries, but not, by plane a lot of the time it's by bus so sometimes you're on the bus for like eight hours which which sucks and yeah you have to be like I think most of the time we had to be on the bus by either like 7 30 or 8 o'clock in the morning so you guys probably might think I'm a little bit crazy but I would get up I love to explore areas by like running like jogging through the area so yeah I uh I would get up at like 6 a.m and go for a run and then come back and get on the bus for like eight. But yeah, some nights we were out until like three or four and then you'd have to be on the bus by like eight o'clock. Yeah. That's actually something I picked up from Max. What's that? R- running around the city to like yeah. kind of explore. Yeah. When I was backpacking Europe, that was one of my favorite things is whenever uh, I would check into my hostel, literally throw my stuff down, put on my running shoes, put on some, and not like, most of the time, not even headphones and just go for a run, but I'd have my phone and I'd kind of be like, oh, that looks like a cool bar. Take a photo of it or save the location and then just keep going and do that for, you know, an hour. I was running a lot at this time, but I would go for like an hour or two hours, not running the whole time, but, you know, explore, take notes and circle back later on. Yeah, that's that's basically what I was doing, too. It's fun. Yeah. It's a great way to get to know the city without any like uh, initial biases. You know what I mean? Um, I accidentally stumbled upon the, I didn't know I was near the Louvre when I was in Paris for the first time and I went running and I was like, Oh, that's a really cool maybe yeah, museum. Actually, yeah. And I just like ran through it and I was like, and I had to pretend like I like did it on purpose. Cause I didn't want to look like a idiot just kind of popping out and being like, Whoa, like yeah. this is crazy. You know, I wanted to ask you guys didn't do any overnight buses. It was always, uh, like a day process of traveling. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. overnight buses, which was nice. Yeah, I'm I totally feel you on the whole uh it's it's planned out to a T like by the minute every activity and there's definitely pros to it and cons to it and as especially as a tour leader I remember those moments where I'm like I wish I didn't have to do this either or wish we didn't have to get going right now either but you know otherwise it'll take away from the whole next day but did you guys have day offs do you have free days like one day of like do whatever you want relax sleep go explore So I had more of that in Spain because Spain was, I, that group was like a 
longer tour. It was 16 days. Um, and so I had time, like I, in Ibiza, it, Ibiza was basically kind of just do what you want. So we had beach days and like we could, yeah, kind of just like be on our own and explore as much as we wanted to. Um, on the first tour, I think that there was only a few times where we had only just like a couple hours to ourselves. Like, um, I think we had a f- half a day or oh, maybe almost a full day in Munich, um, which was actually perfect because that's when, so I needed a bathing suit. I didn't realize I was going to Ibiza. So I was like, oh crap, I need a bathing suit for my next tour. <laughs> wait, wait, how did you not realize you were going to Ibiza? <laughs> I booked the Spain one super last minute and um, I didn't know that like I was looking through it on one of the bus like on one of the long bus rides and I was like oh shit I'm going to Ibiza (laughs) and I'm like I'm gonna need a bathing suit I don't have a bathing suit so we had a couple hours in Munich and I was like perfect I'll buy one I'll buy one in Munich we'll go shopping so I went with like the girl I was rooming with And then suddenly we were stuck because Munich had just won the Champions League final Mm -hmm. and we were stuck in the city square and like couldn't get out cops everywhere trying to prevent like just riots and stuff. And and it was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. And are you finding yourself like, you know, as you're getting from one place to another, like Amsterdam into Austria, that you're getting exhausted of this schedule? Was it always like, hey, I'm exploring something new and you're so excited about like the next activity that you don't really think about that? I think that's probably what it was. Like, especially for the first group, like it was eight countries in 14 days. So it was so fast that you're always like, oh, wow, a new country. But of course, like, we would definitely pass out on the bus for hours at a time. But as soon as they wake you up and they're like, okay, we're in Austria. Or, okay. We're in Switzerland. It was like, Oh, okay. Like you're like wide awake. Cause you're super excited to be wherever you are. So. Aside from the convenience of not having to plan and think and debate internally with yourself about whether or not you made the right decision to do a certain activity or go see something or not. Uh, I feel like that's one of the biggest pros of these tours is that like, yeah, eight cities in that short amount of time is a lot, but they make sure that you kind of get the best that you can in that short amount of time in there. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like a highlight reel, basically. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. isn't bad. I mean, Probably obviously. Grand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was there anything else, like a, a boundary or uh, an aspect of the the tour, the group tour life that you didn't like that kind of felt restricted or they were holding you back or you wanted to do, but you couldn't because it's against their rules and regulations. And and as it pertains to that first tour group, because I know you said that the second one was a little bit different and we'll get to that, but as it pertains to the first one. For the first one, I would definitely say in Italy, I found it a little restrictive, just um, like I wanted to try different restaurants and, but the group was going to a certain restaurant and like, like it's, in Rome, I think we went to two restaurants that like, I really didn't like, and I wouldn't have chosen. Um, So that kind of sucked. And like, I could tell even just like going in, I was like, I don't like this is where wouldn't be where I would go. Um, So yeah, and like, um, there were times, there were times where I was like, Oh, I'd like to see a little bit more of that or, or like explore that a little bit more. Um, I remember feeling that way in Switzerland. Um, like I just wanted to explore the town a little bit, but there wasn't, there wasn't time. Um, so especially like while the shops were open, like I do my jog, but nothing's open at six in the morning. So, um, yeah, that was probably one of the crappier things is like restaurants and just having free time to explore a little more. And from those first 14 days, what sticks out the most to you? Like in terms of the places that you visited that you were like, yeah, this This is the shit. I loved like one of those extra things was uh, I think a lot of people do this is um, whitewater rafting in Austria. That was awesome. I loved that. I'm so glad I opted to do that. Yeah, there one of them was like a club go to a club in Florence. And that was that was like kind of cool to get to have the added experience of going out in Italy because you I don't know, you just kind of getting to know get going out in different countries is is 
interesting. And then the the thing from that tour that probably sticks out the most is they took us to Dachau. Um, oh, yeah. And the the tour leader was amazing. Like she, her history, she, like, I'm sure Max, like you probably know the places you go inside and out. But she, yeah, she like, she talked to us for about two or three hours leading up to going to Dachau, just about the history of it and um, and just World War II in general. And then going there, it just made it so much more moving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it made such an impression for sure. I used to be a major World War II buff uh, back in the day. And when I was in Europe, I, I went to a number of concentration camps and a number of like historical locations and like you know, it's it's really different seeing the photos, especially now with technology, like being able to look it up online. It's still very powerful being there in person. Um, and like, you know, just you're standing on the land. You're like, OK, like this happened here. Like it's it's much more uh, empowering. It's definitely not the right word, but it's it's powerful. Yeah. It is very powerful. Yeah. 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 And and so as your tour group for the first one is wrapping up. Um, you know, you do get very close to the people that you're traveling with. I know it's only 14 days, but I think one of the very powerful or interesting things about traveling in, in such close proximity with a group of individuals for the first time is you feel like you know them for quite a while, at least longer than you've actually known them. So was this a little bit of, was there a little bit of dread ending your first trip, your first travel uh, group? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I was so sad. And also I was it made me almost extra nervous to do the next one because I was, I was worried. I'm like, Oh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be the same as this one. This one was so much fun. The people were so great. Like my roommate and I got so close over the 14 days. I was like, Oh, the next one's going to be crappy in comparison to this. So yeah, there was definitely some dread of it ending for sure. That, that leads in really well into what I wanted to ask, because I, at least in my experiences, I, I felt the exact same way you did. It was really hard for me to like leave uh, these people that I ever like met at these hostel groups and move on to the next. Because in my head, I always thought it's not going to be as good. Um, and, and I was always proven wrong that this happened for you in your own like, you know, solo travel adventure to Paris, Versailles, Madrid, Barcelona. Uh, yeah, well, yes and no. Um, like it was it was still great traveling with a few people from the group and we could kind of reminisce together and uh we when we went to versailles it was a ton of fun um and then we went to madrid and barcelona and when i was in barcelona that's where tyler went home so then it was just like me by myself um and i met some other great people um from the states um i think they were from maine and in um, california in California. Yes. No, but I met you in Madrid, yeah, not yeah, Barcelona. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I met, uh, I met some people um, in Barcelona and uh, had a bunch of fun with them. So that was great. But when I came back to Madrid, this was like after I had met you, John, because yeah, like we had fun in Madrid, even though we didn't get into that soccer game. But uh, yeah, um, then I had like a, a little bit of a lull where there wasn't very many people in the hostel I was staying at. Like you guys had gone home and I was like, yeah, there was like two or three days where I was like, Oh, this kind of sucks. Like there's no one around. I can't go out with anyone. I'm just by myself. Like, so yeah, there was a period where I was like, Oh man, I don't like this. But then the next tour started and it was good. And so I feel like I don't know too much of your backpacking or traveling history without being in a tour. Like, were you a big backpacker before? Did you kind of grow up doing that and then try tours? And if so, which would you choose over? Like, how do you? So I leading up to that, like I was 23 at the time of this trip. So I had only done like trips with my parents. Um, and then, um, like I said, I played soccer in England um, and Wales when I was in high school. So that was actually a trip with just my soccer team and like the coaches and stuff. So yeah, it was really cool. Um, so that was like the first time I had gone without my family. Well, actually, sorry, second time. I went to Ireland um, with my friend uh, and another friend and their parents. Um, so that was the first time without my family. 
and then this soccer trip without my family but still like everything was kind of planned like your coaches didn't want you to be off on your own for too long um but since then I've done things uh more backpacking style um with like a partner or something and I and I will say like having a little bit of a more relaxed way of doing it I do really like that but sometimes I I have thought while I've been away like oh if this was a tour group like we'd be doing so much like we'd have like something fun planned every single day so I don't Mm -hmm. yeah there's Did you hear that John's that. slow travel is pretty good? No, no. Um, so that's that's where we kind of differ. Like the three of us, Max and Saskia are of the, hey, I like this place. Let me stay here for three months. And I'm like, all right, I got to get the hell out of here. Like, I got to go see something new. But um, it's just travel styles. Uh, and, and I do want to dive in a little bit more into this because I do think it's a very important question and kind of get your perspective on it, you know, at at the conclusion of your trip. But I do want to get into that second tour group, which is the all-inclusive Spain trip. Is this still Contigui Tours? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was Contigui too. And you picked this prior to you leaving to Paris the first time, yeah? So it was yeah. just kind of a continuation. And how did this change and uh, or differ from like the first tour group? Obviously, it's just Spain that you're touring, but you said it was a lot more relaxed or slower in nature. Yeah, yeah, kind of both like it. um, Well, first of all, because you're just going through Spain, the bus uh, rides aren't as long, which was really nice. Um, And then yeah, like we had uh, the three days in Ibiza to just kind of do what we wanted. Um, And yeah, each I think we had just more time like the first tour group, it was like, you know, just a night in Amsterdam, then you're off to Germany and just a night in Germany, then you're off to somewhere else. Whereas in Spain, like, I think we were a couple days and I think we spent maybe two or three days in Barcelona when we were there. A um, couple days of Granada and Sevilla, but like we were um, like, those are close together. So you're not traveling for very long. You don't have to be on the bus super early because it's not a long trip. Um, so yeah, it just felt more relaxed and spread out. I've always wanted to go to Granada and Sevilla was a place where I like, ran- I randomly stopped to break up a trip from Barcelona to Portugal. And I remember being there for less than 24 hours and just like beating myself up on the inside being like, I should have stayed here for three days at least, you know, one of the most beautiful cities I've ever seen. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And- and let's talk about that Spain trip a little bit more. Um, you know, I, I find it so interesting that you hit eight countries in 14 days and you did a 16 day tour the second time around and did what, five, six cities in that same amount of time span. So in, in the end, what did you feel about that? Was that, would you have preferred to have done like more countries in Eastern Europe, Central Europe, or was that Spain trip just what you wanted? No, I did want to do more countries. Um, It was more about the timing of it. Like when the tour started, I I was kind of like confined to when I was going to be there because I had already booked my flight home. Um, So I was just, and my flight home was from Madrid. So I I knew I had to to end up in Madrid at some point. Um, And so really, I knew I was going to be in Spain. So I had to look for tours that were going to Spain. And I was really hoping that like, maybe there'd be something that included like, um, Croatia or something, or yeah, maybe even more like Eastern Europe. Um, but it, it was more so because I was confined a little bit to Spain. So that's why it was a just Spanish tour. And Max, you're probably the most well-traveled in Europe, including Saskia, I would say. You've done a lot of Eastern, Central, and Western Europe, right? Yeah, I've been all over. Um, I, you know, Challenging Saskia to who's more well-versed in Europe would be a little difficult because I feel like she definitely has been like, you know, I mean, she was raised in France. And I mean, you know that, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> she's been... She's been to a handful of places. I think on a, on paper, I've been to more places in Europe than her, but I feel like she's done a really, like, she grew up there. She's been in, just immersed in it and really get, getting to experience the cultures. But um, yeah, Europe is amazing. In Eastern Europe, a lot of people don't tap into it, but it's it's very special and very unique. And you were bringing up Croatia. 
I love Croatia. I love Bosnia, Montenegro, uh, Albania. It's just, it's all worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Those are still, still places I want to hit for sure. Next Kentucky tour. Good going. <laughs> no, I'll do it. I'll do it on my own now. I actually, <laughs> since, since then I've done much more traveling on my own. Yeah. Uh, I guess really just what a, the last one regarding your second tour is what place stood out the most in Spain for you? I mean, Granada and Sevilla, just, just because they were so beautiful and I was not expe- like, I knew nothing about those uh, two cities going into it. Um, so that stood out a lot. Of course, I mean, Ibiza was so much fun. Uh, it definitely, definitely stood out. Like I'd never been to a club until six in the morning. And like, then you're yeah. like, oh, shoot, like I got to yeah. go catch a boat. Like, yeah. Yeah. so. Yeah. Would you say that that's been kind of the theme for the majority of your trips, not staying out until 6 a.m., but, um, you know, kind of being too. being overly like overwhelmed in general with just like how much you really love like a city or town, you know, not expecting a lot from it or not knowing it, you know, little to at all. Uh, Is that something that you kind of find yourself in just in awe being like, Oh, unexpected, love it would definitely recommend. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think it was great. I mean, I'm, I guess I was probably disorganized going into my trip because I didn't look up a lot before I went. Um, But I think that was so much better. Yeah, it's so much better because then you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I didn't know (laughs) anything about this. Like Austria, I knew nothing about. And then to get there and be like, oh my God, the mountains are so beautiful. Yeah, like it's, it makes it so much better when it's unexpected. (laughs) Agree to disagree here. (laughs) Fair, fair. Yeah. But I do like the way John does it too. Like I like the go, go, go. Cause then you're like hitting some good spots that maybe you might be kind of too tired mm-hmm. to, to do. A hundred percent. Yeah. In general, I consider myself like the energizer bunny. It's like, Hey, I can get off on like four or five hours of sleep tops and I'll still go out there and like full energy, go out and like do all these things. I'm, I'm very like, check the box, check the box. I saw this, I did that. So I love it. I think one thing we neglect to mention a lot, and I don't know how if Saskia can relate to this, but for me, at least, I feel like I do a good job of matching my energy with someone of your energy True. so that when I'm traveling, like I'm very, True. someone's like, hey, do you want to go do this? I'm like, sure, let's go. <clears throat> and like, I have the energy to keep going with it, but I'm not going to, you know, do the research plan or too much at least. Uh, but I feel like I do a good job of like finding people who have good itineraries and then kind of jumping on those. Yeah. And yeah, that's a good way that, of doing it too. Yeah. And I guess that brings up a, another important question. Do you think everyone that signed up for this Contigi tour, either one, right? The Spain or the a, a country one, people that signed up for these types of tours are going in there with the, they have a certain, let's say, flair or personality that kind of meshes well with other people that are signing up for this type of adventure. So it's, it makes it easier to get along since everyone has, I don't want to say low expectations, but just, hey, I want to have a good time all I came here for yeah yeah it's funny because I think if we had mixed the two tour groups I don't think it would have been the same vibe it was funny because the first tour group you could tell everybody was just like there to party I shouldn't say everyone but majority of people are like okay let's party let's go out every single night and the second tour group obviously like I mean we did party but they were much more chill and like they even even it it went well with the way the tour was laid out because they were like relaxed like no let's just take our time and like see this place yeah we'll go out at night but like it wasn't like okay let's start drinking let's start drinking like whereas the first group was more like that so uh yeah the two tour groups a lot of people seem to be on similar pages um, but it was good that they weren't combined i think (laughs) sounds like you like the first one a lot more (laughs) (laughs) no bias opinion there at all i mean (laughs) (laughs) i I don't know it's hard to say because that was like my first experience too so yeah hard to match a sex show i guess hard to talk (laughs) yeah (laughs) true true going into this there's obviously preconceptions you have of what like a tour group was and maybe advantages that or now since you've done a lot of individual or personal travel, do you think you could have done this trip on your own? 
like you planning everything and seeing as much as you did for maybe a cheaper cost? Honestly, no, I don't think so. I do think the price at the time was super reasonable. I'm pretty sure the first tour cost me like $1,600. And so Canadians or Canadians, sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, gotta, gotta. Yeah, there's a difference for sure. Uh, 1600 Canadian. And it did include some meals like most, I think almost every single breakfast, some dinners, some of the events that we went to the bus, everything. So like considering train rides and hostels even and, um, food and, and just like the white water rafting, everything. Like, I don't think I could have done it for that price, to be honest. I was going to say piggybacking on that, um, for some of the larger tours that I've done, me and the tour guides would, the other tour guys would also have these conversations and try to figure out like, Hey, are these trips that we're leading actually worth it to our customers? And most of the time we get discounts as a company to book such large, you know, it's like buying in bulk, right? But in terms of tourism. So a lot of people do think that these companies are kind of expensive and they're not really the most budget friendly, but theoretically they are because they have the better deals. They have the partnerships with those other third party uh, businesses. So, And since Sarah, have you done any group travel or tour group since? I know we we said you've done a lot of individual travel or self-planning. No, I haven't done any tour groups since those two. Yeah. I've just done solo stuff, like not just on my own, but yeah. And how have you felt that it compared? Like, do you look back or yeah, just how do you, how do you compare the two now that you have both insight into both? Yeah. I, like, I mean, both, both have pros and cons. I have truthfully, like as I am, I'm now 33, I'm like, I feel like I should do another Kentucky tour before I turn 35. <laughs> because like, I, I don't, it was, I really like just having a little bit more freedom um, and, and being able to just be like, actually, you know what, I'm going to stay here for an extra couple of days. Or you know what, I like really want to check out this town more. Um, and I've got the time to do it. It it is really nice to to not have that schedule. But I will I will admit that the last few years I've been thinking I'm like, oh, you know, I do like like how much you do get like yeah. just the highlights of everywhere that I'm like, I should just do another one before I turn 35. But obviously, there's other tour groups I can do. But I'm hearing a nice balance of both like group tours and traveling like, you know, independently are both good ways to go. Yeah, that's, um, that's what I think anyway. I think you should, I think it's a brilliant idea to try to knock one more uh, tour out with them before you hit 35. Then maybe take a little 10 year break until that 45 and up tour group. You're no, able to 60, 60 and up. Right? I oh, think it's 60 and up? Yeah. Wait until you're yeah. eligible for it. You know, then you can, <laughs> then you can expand your horizon in terms of travel there even further. <laughs> that's a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I do want to ask, you did touch a little bit about how much it costs. You said the first one was about 1600 Do you know how much the roughly the Spain one was? I think the Spain one was more expensive, and I was kind of surprised because yeah, we I'm didn't do as much. Yeah, um, it was, I mean, it was two extra days, but even still, I think it was, honestly, I think it was close to 2200 Canadian. And, but again, I was a little bit desperate to book a tour, so... I was like, oh, whatever, that's just what it costs. But um, yeah, and that could have been because we we had to fly to Ibiza and back. So did Kentucky or I feel like a lot of group travel companies do do this, but they do either at least assist or provide flight deals. Did was there anything of that sort involved in your package? Not that I recall, like you mean to get to and from the tour? Yeah. Not that I recall, okay. but I had my flights already booked. So maybe oh, that's gotcha. why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so fair to say you would recommend Kentucky Travels to a friend? I would. I would. Yes. Now we got to make sure we reach out to them, Max, because we're giving them too much press here. Yeah. <laughs> I do also want to say that uh, Intrepid Travels is notorious for having great tour leaders as well. I may or may not know firsthand. Very similar to Kentucky. Also, True Travels, either one of those three, sponsor us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Good yeah. to know. 
<laughs> uh, so I, I'm really happy to hear that you're a fan of like running when you get to a new city or a new country. Like that's, I don't know, something that was really important to me early on. And I thought it was just so beneficial and a very nice way of getting to know your new surroundings. Were there any other pro tips that you picked up either, you know, in terms of traveling for a group tour and traveling independently? Were there any things you picked up little, little hints that would make your travels a little easier? I think like I've been to, I'd say like one tip that I found uh, just in Italy, like as I've been to Italy a couple of times since, and I did find like, I've known people who have rented cars and I wouldn't suggest renting a car in Italy. Like it's so easy to travel around on the train. And so, yeah, you can get everywhere. So I've known a couple people that they've complained about their experience and their troubles with having a car and getting around. And from my experience of getting through Italy, that was, that was one thing that I found helpful. Yeah. The running through, through cities is one of the, the uh, things that I love. Okay. So overall, uh, are you more pro group tour independent travels? Like your thoughts, I know you kind of spoke on it a little bit, but if you had to decide now, forever hold your peace are you going to do another group tour or are you going to stick to traveling and making your own itinerary i think i'll definitely do another group tour but i will say i think it for me personally i think it depends on if i'm traveling with people like with friends or or a partner versus by myself i think if i definitely if i do another solo trip i think i would do i think i'd do part of it again with a tour group just because maybe i'm just a little i like having the like forced interaction with other people versus like kind of getting out of your comfort zone in a hostel and being like, Hey, I'm Sarah. And like trying to meet people. But if I was with a group of friends or, or a partner, I think I'd rather do it on our own, kind of plan out some stuff on our own or, or do it like a little bit of freestyle. All right. So Sarah, thank you for being on the show. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's been fun. If you would like to hear more about Sarah's travels, both in a group tour and independently, you can check us out on our website, gtspodcast.com, Instagram, which is Globetrotters Podcast, all one word, at Globetrotters Podcast, on Twitter, at Globetrot Pod, and Facebook, Globetrotters Podcast. Editing and mixing on this podcast was done by Gregory Friedel. Music by Thin Blue Collective. You can check out their music on Bandcamp and Spotify. And Sarah, before we end it, if people want to know a little bit more about your travel, where can they find you or learn a little bit more about you? Uh, I mean, I guess my Instagram, it's at Sarah with two H's underscore Croft. Uh, yeah. Until next it. time. <laughs> yeah.